All right, this lesson is on symbols and the different types of symbols that are available to you. The first one we're gonna look at is this one here. It's the monster. The monster here is a graphic symbol. It's this one here. This is what the little icon looks like for it, okay? Um, a graphic symbol is basically good for things that are just gonna have either movement directly on the stage, okay, which we'll learn about, and also for nested animation, if you want to preview what it is that is happening in the animation, okay? With graphic symbols, what you need to keep in mind is that you cannot run certain things on them like filters, okay? So even though you have it as a graphic symbol, you do have the ability to, when you go into your properties palette, you will have the ability to select it and change the instance of it here to movie clip. And even if you change the instance of it, when you go into the library, it's still gonna remain a graphic clip, okay? Notice that the movie clip symbol here this little icon here is the same as the one for the movie clip, which we're just gonna learn about in a second, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just switch this back. I can do this and change the instance of it. That means that even if you create it as one thing, you can always change it to something else when you use it a different time, and that's called an instance, okay? So kind of what you created here is kind of not that important because you can always change it when you use it as an instance. But also, if you did wanna change it permanently, you could right click on it and you can select properties and then you could change it here to a movie clip permanently. And then the icon would change, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. All right, the next kind of symbol that we're gonna learn about is this one here. This is a movie clip. This is the background, it's this one here. The movie clip, what this is good for, it's actually one of the most powerful ones because you can control it with code and then obviously the movie clip or either here or in its instance is very powerful because it allows you to run things like filters, okay? Such as the blur filter, the drop filter, that type of thing. All right, so again, just because you create something as one type of symbol doesn't mean that you can't modify it and change it either here or when you use it as an instance, okay? So this one is pretty powerful. Uh, the next one you have here is actually a button symbol, and that one is this one here. It's the start button here. And if we click on this one, I'm just gonna double click on it. You have basically the ability to change the states of it and it basically has hotspots. This is the general hotspot where you define the hotspot of where when you roll over it, you'd be able to click on it and that it'd take you to somewhere within the animation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of that one. This button one, we're gonna have a whole lecture on this, so I'm not gonna go into this one further. Just know that it allows you to uh, click on it and send you to different parts in the animation, all right? Now, key differences between uh, these three here is that this one is the only one that's gonna be able to link you to animations and have that rollover state embedded within it naturally. And the key difference between these two here is that if you were to run what we call nested animation, and we're about to learn about that here, movie clips, if you do a nested animation, you won't be able to see the animation as it's happening when you scrub your timeline. And this one here, the graphic clip will allow you to see the animation, okay? So we're gonna learn about that one here. So this one is actually the biker here. It's a graphic movie clip. Currently, it's a graphic movie clip, all right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn down, turn off all these. And it has nested animation, and we're gonna learn more about nested animation later. But basically, it has this animation that's already happening. It's not happening here on the stage. It's happening here within the biker, okay? So here's the animation here. Okay, it's nested within the biker, so we're gonna come out. Right now, because this animation, it's a graphic symbol, when I scrub the timeline, I am able to see it animating. Okay, just like that. That's that nested animation that's happening in here. It's not happening here, even though it might look like it because I have it visible. All that is happening here, this gray area, is that it's just being visible to me. All right, so this nested animation here, it occurs for 16 frames here, okay? As long as I put it on the timeline for 16 frames here, which it actually extends way past that, then it will continue to repeat, 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 and loop and loop and loop over itself, okay? That's what nested symbols do, okay? But it's just a graphic symbol. Now the difference is, is that because it's a graphic symbol, like as I was saying before, I'm able to preview it here on the timeline as I scrub the timeline, but also I have to keep in mind that when I place it on my timeline, I need to have it there for at least the 16 uh, frames that it was up for previously, okay? And if I put it on for longer than that, then it's gonna continue looping, okay? 
with a movie symbol. So I could turn this in. I'm just going to select it. And I'm actually going to not change the instance of it. I'm going to actually directly change the properties here. And I'm going to turn it into a movie clip here. And then I'm also going to change the instance of when I'm using it here on the timeline. Okay. To a movie clip. All right. This might not make sense to you right now. You'll eventually learn how to apply all of this. Um, but just the key thing that I want you to remember is that when this is a movie clip here, now if I scrub on the timeline, notice you can't see that nested animation. Even though if I go to the library here, in the biker, I have this nested animation and that's the one that I have on the timeline. Okay, I can't see it just because I'm using it as a movie clip. Notice if I go here to the properties palette and select this and we look here, it's selected to movie clip. And that's what makes it not visible when I scrub my timeline. Now, even though I can't see it here when I scrub the timeline, I can go into File, Publish Preview, Flash. And what you'll notice is that here, even though it's a movie clip, I am able to preview it. I can't preview it when I scrub the timeline, but I can preview it here. Okay, and this is basically your movie button. See how when I click, it'll turn to red. I can select those states. This is the one that has the blur filter on it. And this is the one that's just stationary as a graphic clip, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click off of that one. So just something to keep in mind is that if you're using a movie symbol, it will not preview um, on the stage as you scrub your timeline. Okay. All right. This concludes your lesson on symbols, the different types of symbols. If you have any questions, make sure to contact me. I'm going to go ahead and change this, select it, and change it back, its instance back to a graphic clip here. And now if I scrub across, I can see it, okay? Just because I changed the instance of it. So really changing this to a movie clip or a graphic clip, as you saw, is not really necessary. I just did it to, so that you could see the icon for it, okay? So I'm going to change it back to a graphic clip, okay? And its instance is already changed to a graphic clip. And that's just to illustrate the point that um, 